last time we visited Meerkat Manor, Tosca had become permanently evicted from the Whiskers group by dominant female, Flower. And Tosca's brother, Shakespeare, disappeared while trying to defend Flower's new pups from an attack by arch rivals, the Lazuli. Meet the Whiskers. Flower, the leader of the group, Zaphod, her dedicated partner, Yosarian, his troubled brother, Mozart, the wayward daughter, fearless grandson Mitch, the playful kids, and their ever-present enemy, the Lazuli. This is Meerkat Manor. The Whiskers, a 40-strong group of meerkats that make their living in the Kalahari Desert in South Africa. What makes these meerkats special is that they've been studied by Cambridge University biologists for more than 10 years. They're one of the most thoroughly researched groups of mammals on Earth. Flower is the dominant female. The radio collar around her neck allows us to track the gang's every move. After more than a year of filming, we're building up a detailed picture of their complex family lives. From attacks by vicious predators, fights with rival gangs, and intimate moments as their continuing story unfolds. And this time around, life for Flower and the Whiskers isn't getting any easier. It's winter in the Kalahari, two months since the Lazuli attacked the Whiskers burrow. Shakespeare hasn't been seen since defending Flower's pups. And evicted female Tosca has also disappeared. Without the warmth and protection of the rest of the group, she probably died during the cold winter months. Although the desert may look green, it's dry, and the rains won't arrive for at least another month. Spring can't come soon enough for the whiskers, and they're finding life extremely tough. It's early morning, and it's cold. At this time of year, a good meal is hard to come by, so the gang is forced to forage on the edge of their territory. Even though meerkats can easily shift their own body weight in sand, the scorpions and beetles that are a meerkat staple are hiding deep in the sand and out of reach. For the time being, the whiskers will have to settle for a diet of beetle and ant larvae. This is a big problem for group leader Flower. She has a new litter of hungry pups. While the rest of the group hunts for food, back at the babysitting burrow, Flower's three daughters, Kinkajou, Mozart, and Daisy, are looking after Flower's first litter of the year. The pups only emerged from their den a week ago, after spending three weeks being cared for underground. At a month old, they're just six centimeters long, or a little more than two inches. And like kids the world over, play fighting is one of their favorite games. But this litter is a little more aggressive than usual. Attila seems intent on attacking everyone around him, and his little sister Mango needs some help from Mozart to keep him under control. Even the adults come in for some rough treatment from the new litter.
The reason they're so aggressive is probably because they're starving. When there's an abundant food supply, any female can produce milk for flowers pups, a process called allolactation. Because there's little to eat during the winter months, none of the females at the burrow are able to lactate, and the new recruits will have to wait until flower returns before they get any milk. But it doesn't stop them from trying. Although this is a bad time of year to be a pup, it's the perfect time of year to mate. When the rains start in a few weeks' time, food will become plentiful. Meerkats instinctively know this, and that's why roving male meerkats are on the lookout for females to mate with. Grog, a huge male from a group called the Commandos, has found the Whiskers babysitting burrow. He's hoping that one of the females will take the chance to mate with him. Roving can be a risky business, as males will often fight and even kill trespassers from rival groups. But with the rest of the Whiskers away, Grog could be lucky. Unfortunately for Grog, feisty new pup Attila unwittingly leads a charge at him. Instinctively, Mozart and Daisy follow Attila to protect him and chase Grog away. While the females have pups to look out for, he won't find a mate. But he'll not be the only roving male to try. The Whiskers foraging party is moving fast. They're widening their search for food, but they have to be extra vigilant because they're venturing into new territory. This dry riverbed marks the edge of the Whiskers patch. On the other side, the commandos have moved in, and they are one aggressive bunch of meerkats. With scarce resources, both groups have been foraging outside their normal areas in recent months, and the Whiskers are understandably nervous. Zaphod, the dominant male of the Whiskers, is keeping an eye out for predators and strangers. But with only a distant vulture in sight, he can get on with other business. As dominant male, he has sole mating rights with flower. To maintain that status, he has to keep the other males in check. Zaphod's biggest competition is his brother Eusarian. He used to be the dominant male of the Whiskers, and this unpredictable meerkat is still a constant threat. So Zaphod often lays down the law to keep him submissive. Eusarian is used to being bullied around by his brother, and with discretion being the better part of valor, he lies down in submission. Eusarian will have to put up with this kind of treatment as long as Zaphod is the dominant male. So rather than hanging around his domineering brother, he heads off alone. Just a short distance away, the Whiskers' arch rivals, the Lazuli, have suffered badly during the winter. Kazana is the dominant female of the group. But her long-standing partner, Big Sai, is no longer around. Soon after he led the deadly Lazuli attack on Shakespeare and the pups at the Whiskers Borough, he became seriously ill and died. These two pups deep underground in the Lazuli den are his last offspring. And now, 
one of Big Sai's older sons, J.D., has taken temporary charge of the Lazuli. Although he can fulfill some of the duties of a dominant male, like scent marking the territory, Kazana is his mother, so he can't mate with her. Without any unrelated males in the group, she can't breed unless an outsider turns up. And Eusarian is unwittingly heading in her direction. If he mates with Kazan and manages to depose JD, then he could become the dominant male of the Lajuli, a situation that would leave the two brothers, Zephod and Eusarian, in charge of two rival gangs. As evening draws in, the Osirians venturing ever closer to the Lajula. But something has attracted his attention. It's a lone meerkat, an evicted female from the Lajula called Pancake. The telltale sign of ticks on her face show that she's been living alone and hasn't been groomed for a long time. This is far too good an opportunity for Eusarian to pass up. When he catches up with her, she welcomes his attention. Unfortunately, He's not the only meerkat vying for her affection. Grog from the Commandos has been searching for lone females since his unsuccessful mission to the Whiskers babysitting burrow. By furiously scent marking, Eusirian tries to see off the competition. His tactic seems to have worked. With the competition gone, it's time for Eusarian to try out his romantic techniques on Pancake. 